Hello, Galaxy. I need for you to identify yourself. This is not an anonymous web chat.
Yo, hola. Ik zat het dit keer. Is this Galaxy? Ik zat het dit keer. No, no. Hello, can you guys hear me? Hello, can you hear me? No one wants to answer. Cowards. Okay, uh, Michelle, uh, Michelle, thanks for telling me. You can hear me. Great. 
for we got to check these things before we do these. Audio is a big problem. Hey, Victor, Victor's here. Oh, you heard good. Okay, and Michelle, uh, Michelle, thanks for calling in. You've been here in the break. We've got to check these things before we do these. Audio is a big problem. Hey. Oh, hello, Victor. I look like a thief. Hola, Victor. Hi, you are. Hello, hello. Give me, give me one minute, please. Hello, okay. Hey, you are. How are you doing? I'm fine. We have nothing here. Oh, good. So you're all set up at home, huh? Yeah, we came home because it's late, late. So we. Okay, but you're all set up, okay? Someone's helping you? Yeah, Tijuana is here. Oh, good. Oh, uh, hello, how are you? Thank you very much. Uh, Victor, how are you hello. doing? Fine, fine. I didn't know that uh, we, we were going to have a nice uh, lecture with uh, Dr. Yuha. Uh, I got uh, the, the, the message uh, a little late, so... Yeah, How are you? well, well you know, I was good, nice enough to change the time to make it easier for people like you uh, to, to yes, watch. Of course, for, Latin America. For, this, this, this pretty well goes to Latin America, Europe. I mean, you know. Uh, oh, man. Yes, I, I think so. It's uh, the schedule. Uh, the hour is very nice for all Latin America. So yeah, yeah. we we need to promote uh, these lectures that yeah. are very useful yeah. for uh, all the neurosurgery community in Latin America. Yeah, I guess uh, there are certain areas. You, I, I, I guess you has been to Trujillo, uh, and also uh, one of his editors is from Peru. I forget the gentleman's joke. Joke. Okay, okay. No. Excuse me, I'll be back in a minute. It is no, no student. Okay. No, I hope so. Hello, Oops. Dr. Yuha. Hello, Victor. Very nice. 
Uh, I have uh, several videos about uh, anatomy of the spine that I want to send you. So I was working this week with them because it's very good for, uh, for uh, some presentation in, 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 your, uh, in, in your hospital. Now they are, they are ready. Maybe we can show them online, Victor, sometime. Excuse me? Maybe we can show them online sometime. See the video. Okay, now. Okay, now, now, now. Okay, okay. Can, can you hear me? Hear me? Hello, uh, you ha can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, this week I was working with uh, videos about uh, anatomy of a spine. Uh, they are uh, very nice, very clear. So this uh, weekend, I am going to send you uh, in order to... to uh, I, I think that uh, you can present uh, these videos to the team of uh, spinal surgery. So yeah, they, yeah. Are, they are very nice because uh, you can see very clear the origin of the, the arteries of uh, the lumbosacral segment of the spine. It's very yeah, nice, to, it's very nice to see you here, uh, Dr. Yuha. Yeah, for me too also. How is the weather in Mexico? Very hot. Uh, give me, give me one minute because of the dog is. Uh, dog is barking. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you have Miami's getting bad again. Yeah, I have uh, looked at the news. Yeah, I have been reading it. Yes. Uh, the, you know, they eased restrictions, but they had lots of increases. So they went back again to uh, more restrictions. Good morning, Joanna. Good afternoon, everybody. Nice to be here. Hi, Professor. Okay. Hi, Professor Harris. Hey, Yuha. Hey, Yuha. Hey. Hey, Yuha. Mitä kuuluu? Onko mennyt hyvin? Ihan hyvin menee. Vähän on yeah. Kiinan vankina. Kiinan vankina, kun ei mihinkään pääse matkustamaan. Ei saa edes lähikaupungeissa käydä nyt. Joo. Joo, niin me ollaan seurattu sitä vähän sen. Mm. Tosi kiva, että pystyit siirtämään vähän tätä ajankohtaa. Mä itse asiassa soitan töistä 
tota, tällä hetkellä, mutta, tota, mutta mulla on vuoro loppunut nyt, niin halusin. Vi, vi, viisi tuntia aikaerohan. Joo, niin on. Ja. Kyllä. Mm. Tosi hyvä aihe, minkä olet valinnut tänään. Joo, toivottavasti joo. nyt kuulijoita, kuulijoita enemmän. Ehkä eka kerralla vielä, mutta joo. nyt on niin paljon näitä webinaareja, että se on vaikka kova kilpailu. Niin on, se on totta. Minkälainen sää on ollut Kiinassa? No nyt tämä viikko on ollut vähän kylmempää, mutta välillä oli 39-40. Joo. Nyt tulee kuukausilmat mm. Joo, täällä kanssa oli ensin hyvinkin kuuma ja sitten viileni. No täällä viile on sellainen 32. Tai... Mm-hmm. Mäpä laitan tuon kuule tuon videon päälle nyt, niin näet hyvinkin väsyneen ihminen. Ootas. Hei. Ei, ei. Hauska nähdä. No, eipä tuota. Se on viikon, viikon tota 12 tunnin vuorot, niin ei voi olla kovin hehkeä. <laughs> Mutta hauska no, nähdä kiva. nyt. Hauska Joo, nähdä kiva. nyt ihan näin. Kiva nähdä. <laughs> Joo. Mutta toivottavasti kesä tästä taas lämpenee. Olen Näin. molemmin puolin siellä ja täällä. Tämäkin on keskikesä siellä. Täällä on keskikesä, joo, mutta niin kylmä, että joutuu hanskuja käyttämään aamulla. Oh, yeah, mä, ku, yeah. mä kuljen fillarilla. Tota, fillarilla kuljen. Mut kiitos, kiitos tota, kun pidät näitä esityksiä. Joo, kiva nähdä. Kiva joo. nähdä. Joo. No niin. Hello, Dr. Benit. Can I show one video to Dr. Juha? Okay, uh, well, it, it's going to be real. We start in five minutes. Ah, okay, five minutes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, we can see how many. Uh, yeah, only ten people. It's not much. Okay. Twelve is the limit. Mm-hmm. Uh, some viewers can watch it through YouTube, YouTube, um, yeah, you can to YouTube. You, you want to check some videos, uh, you have? I'm okay, I have checked. Okay. I, okay. I'm, I'm, I think if they don't work, then they don't work ever. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we, we usually handle it okay. I'm ready to begin. Okay, let me, uh, Vlad is here. I'm glad to see he's here. Glad I'm just letting him in and some other people. Okay, we'll start. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good morning, this is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. We have the pleasure of having another uh, China Neurosurgery Grand Rounds with you, Hernandez Niemi. Uh, and I'll let uh, Juha take it over. Great. Welcome, Juha. It's all yours. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. So I will speak about middle cell artery aneurysms. Surgery for middle cell artery aneurysms. I speak something about the background first, and then, then uh, so several videos, operative videos. So as you all know I'm working nowadays in China, Chengzhou, and I'm Provincial People's Hospital. And my experience is coming from my former working places from Kuopio, Eastern Finland, and Helsinki, where I was 18 years chairman. So we have from both cities, we have a extremely good databases so we now have a, we know a lot of cerebral aneurysms so there are 17 more than 17,000 patients with more than 22,000 aneurysms and because the middle cerebral artery aneurysm is the most common in Finland so there is a huge collection of middle cerebral artery aneurysms more than 7,000 so 
in the databases are also the historical series. You can see that the, in honor of surgery was begun in 1940s in Finland or one case was done in 1930s, but the main part was done by Professor Snellman and Björkesten, so more than 400 cases were done in 1950s, then a little bit increase in 1960s, and then by far more cases were coming in the coming years, so more than 12,000 patients were treated in this uh, 19, since 1970 to 2015. In Helsinki, more than 12,000. And in Kuopio, we had uh, more than 4,000 patients now in the database. So this together give the number of these cases. So to show how the annual surgery was in former times, this is from 1953 from Helsinki. There is a large close to giant, middle serpatory aneurysm and tied down with silk ligature and then Oliver Kruna clip is put uh, on the silk ligature. This is, uh, there is a story of, about the flying aneurysm. I will tell it quickly. Here we see uh, Professor Pjörkesten and his successor, uh, Professor Troop assisting as a young uh, neuro, uh, resident, assisting Professor Björkesten. So in one case, they had terrible bleeding. Hypotension was in, induced by, an, by the first Finnish neuroanesthetist, Miriatapura. And then they could, did you seal the rent? She was asking and then, Yes, perfect clip. And what happened when dealing with the big aneurysm, main part of the aneurysm was uh, uh, flying on the shoulder of the anesthetist. This is the story that was told to me when I was resident in Helsinki. And old stories also, it was called professor competence, if you could occlude middle cerebral artery without deficit. This was the old story, so uh, jokingly said. So of our databases, there are, uh, this is the Finnish material, more than 22,000 aneurysms. You see that the middle cerebral artery aneurysms are in Finland the most common. More than one third are middle cerebral artery aneurysms and then about the other ones, I will speak in the coming uh, webinars. So we concentrate now on the middle cerebral artery aneurysms. So this, is, this data is coming from uh, Dr. Reza Dastis publication and uh, Professor Jaco Rinnes, a PhD from Kuopio, both studied middle cerebral artery aneurysms. So in the former series, there were proximal, we called M1 aneurysms, 14%, bifurcation aneurysms were by far most common and the distal ones are rare. And then in 2013 or 14, Dr. Ahmed El Sarkavu from Egypt, he was my fellow, he made a nice study on more than uh, 1,309 uh, middle cerebral artery aneurysms, and he made a new classification, El Sarkavu classification. You see that uh, in this classification, there are more M1 aneurysms than in the former classification, uh, so 31%, so decreasing the number of middle cerebral uh, middle cerebral artery bifurcation aneurysms and the distal ones remained also very low, very, very rare. So this is Dr. El Sarkavu from Egypt. This is Ugro Dure opponent and I was uh, the Gustos or chairman that time. Uh, in this picture, there's one, one, one thing, something is 
drawn from you see this m1 aneurysm is here and the artery anterior tempora artery is coming separate but in in reality it is different so the anterior temporal artery is coming from the base of the aneurysm this is one of the uh, rare sites of aneurysm where the uh, branch is coming from the base of the aneurysm the other ones are pica aneurysm pericles artery aneurysm and then basilar superior cerebellar artery aneurysm so once more, the middle cerebral artery aneurysms are the most frequent site in Finnish populations. In these aneurysms, there are many times multiple aneurysms and many times intracerebral hematomas. And because of the heavy bleedings and intracerebral hematomas, there is a big uh, number of deaths before hospital, but also high management, morbidity, and mortality. In the middle cerebral artery aneurysm, there is complex cisterna and vascular anatomy, and blood su supplies the very large part of the cortex, and especially eloquent areas, and collateral circulation is very poor. You remember the old story about the professor competence. You can occlude middle cerebral artery without deficit. This is very rare happening. And one important thing is that middle cerebral artery aneurysms are superficial, close to the surface. So speaking about the surgery treatment, microsurgery in middle cerebral artery aneurysms, you have four different groups. You have unruptured, they are treated elective away, then you have acute ruptured aneurysms, emergency operation with large intracerebral hematomas, and then advanced approaches within complex aneurysms, which are large, giant, or fusiform. So, like always in surgery, planning is important. You have to assess the patient. What is the patient's uh, grade? If there is intracerebral hematoma, aneurysm size, and with what which type of aneurysms, ruptured, unruptured. I always look on the length of M1 when planning the surgery. And then, of course, you have to take care of the calcifications, the strength of the wall, because if the wall is strong, then it is more difficult to clip. And if there are calcifications, it might be impossible clip and parent vessels are sometimes coming from the base of the sac and uh, further about the positioning of the patients i am used to elevate the head clearly above the cardiac level rotate slightly not too much the most uh, usual error is to rotate too much then the temporal lip is uh, covering the sylvian fissure and uh, tilt uh, somewhat, somewhat, somewhat laterally the head and extend the head. But uh, this is always tailored depending on the aneurysm direction, size, and uh, how to put the temporary clip. So this is a craniotomy I have been using since 80s, lateral supraorbital craniotomy with minimal shaving and uh, very little incision in the temporal muscle. So resulting no or very little temporal muscle atrophy and never frontal branch injury. You will see in the videos how it is done. And last time I showed unedited video, 10 minutes uh, of the opening. Also the door was opened in 10 minutes. And then dissection toward the aneurysms. Aneurysm, because the aneurysms are superficial, you don't need and you should not use long instruments because when you are working far away, 
then it is more difficult. I'm using Chevrolet forcepsis and uh, as a, a knife, a needle with tuberculin, syringe, water dissection, and open only around one inch the sylvian fissure to come to the middle sepra. Another middle sepra artery aneurysm and use sharp dissection. Here are some drawings of the aneurysms which are directed towards sylvian fissure. You have to always to, to take careful look how the direction of the aneurysm is we classified with uh, Dr. Dusty in four different directions. This is the direction towards sylvian fissure. And many times, because of the heavy bleeding, there is red, angry, swollen brain. You have to change it to slack brain. In Helsinki, there was extremely good neuroanesthetist. So the brain was usually slack, even there was a heavy bleeding and big hematoma. But uh, when you have big hematoma, you should uh, go for it, take it partially out, and then, you, uh, then the brain is relaxed. If not, then you go to lamina terminalis, open it, and uh, seldom I have been using ventriclostomy because I go under microscope to lamina terminalis and uh, get CSF out there, and then the brain will be slack and you can continue operation. Uh, many times bilateral mirror aneurysms, they can be done in one uh, one operations like in this case is a familiar unruptured aneurysms in this case you i would go from the left side because it is difficult to save this artery coming from the right side i will speak in the future about the contralateral approach so we go to the videos here, <clears throat> edited by Daniel Kochurev, he's a Russian working now in Israel. Right side, unruptured aneurysm. This is CT angio. Where is the aneurysm? You don't see anything. That kind of tiny aneurysm doesn't need any operation. But we know our patients. This is two, three millimeter aneurysm. You see that the lateral supraopsis approach is only is uh, limited to the sphenoid wing. And actually, Professor Plancino from Mayo Clinic was telling me after learning the approach from me that this uh, sphenoid wing is holding the temporal lobe back. So now we go through focused opening of the sylvian fissure to middle cerebral artery aneurysm. And of course, here the anatomy is clear because there is no bleeding. Carefully dissecting now towards the small aneurysm. Usually in that kind of small aneurysms, and ruptured, you don't need temporary clips, but in ruptured ones, it's very important. Now we are coming to the small aneurysm, some venous bleeding there, and now we see the aneurysm. Take a look at the wall of the aneurysm. It is no wonder that also the small aneurysm rupture actually Nearly half of the aneurysm in our databases, the ruptured ones, are less than seven millimeters. And seven millimeter, and then there are many of them which are very small size, like this one. So here a curved clip protects protects the anterior temporal artery. Here and now we see ICG filling 
<coughs> filling of the arteries, but not the aneurysm. And I coagulate down the aneurysm, put some hemostat there. And then close the door like a teeth so that you with glue, I close the cilia fissa, and these are post operative controls here. I selected these videos from hundreds of videos. It's very difficult to find everything. I hope there is a good selection of these videos now. Uh, next case is a ruptured one. You see the difference in anatomy after heavy subarachnoid bleeding, edited by Chen Lau, Hong Kong neurosurgeon fellow from there. This is a ruptured left MCA bifurcation aneurysm, extremely small here again. Like I told you, also small aneurysm rupture. <clears throat> so this is the left-sided other supraorbital approach. And again, the same way going, but here I go down to have space and open now the laminar terminals like I told you. Told you. And you see the flash of CSF coming and sucking CSF. And then the brain is getting slack. And this is extremely important to have a slack brain, not to put retractors like it was <clears throat> It was done in the beginning of the, at least in Helsinki surgery, when I was assisting my seniors. Strong retractors on both frontal and temporal lobe, and this gave, gave uh, difficult contusions in both lobes, like was found in Dr. Rick Kivisai's papers and PAC. So now we go to, towards the aneurysm, again focused, and anatomy is no more clear. There's a lot of blood. <laughs> and we have to find this uh, small aneurysm flushing. Uh, I'm flushing myself to make me slower. Dissecting here, then putting temporary clip on the MCA and now going towards the aneurysm. Temporary clip is protecting aneurysm rupture. You see now the aneurysm is here, very, very small aneurysm. And now the first clip is going there, pilot clip. Like Dr. Drake said, temporary clips make the aneurysm surgery even pleasant one because you don't have acute rupture and now aneurysm clipped and coagulated down and then changing of the clip. Usually the first clip is to protect intraoperative rupture and then the final clip is the perfect clip at the base of the aneurysm. You see that the aneurysm was a little bit bleeding. I took the ble bleeding inside the sucker and suck the aneurysm inside the sucker and to have the clip uh, to take all the base of the aneurysm and then checking the arteries and then ICG angio. Of course, the aneurysm doesn't feel because it has been mainly coagulated and it's very small. I go with more the aneurysm and then many times change the clip and then take the temporary clip out, cleaning the field, put papaverin on the field. Papaverin is releasing the manipulation spasm and again, like in the former case, seal the sylvian fissure. These are both of the pictures. 
we go to the next case. This is also a ruptured aneurysm, but now it is a fusiform aneurysm, not saccular aneurysm. Fusiform aneurysms are more rare and of course more difficult to treat than the saccular ones. These are preoperative images and uh, again it is rather difficult to see the small aneurysm. It looks like there is a fenestration but it is the site of the aneurysm. This here is the right-sided lateral supraopta approach. Minimal shaving. Here in China, they are taking even the beautiful female hair out regularly, and this is very difficult to change. I could change in my own patients, but not widespread until now. This is a Kamiyama schizos. You see, I'm using very high magnification because these are very small schizos. They look like crocodile here. And now we dissect the MCA. You see a lot of blood. And I should have, of course, now temporary clip on M1 proximal to the aneurysm. Here it goes, golden color. The good, it is good to have temporary clips different color than the regular ones. It is not in every place so. And now we dissect. dissect. Here is the beer belly of the dissecting aneurysm. So I selected the L-shaped ring clip. The ring is leaving the M1, the MCA free and let the clip slowly close. So take the beer belly of the dissecting aneurysm here. Trying to take as much of the aneurysm inside the, the clip and checking, checking, and uh, changing the clip position, opening it again. The danger is, of course, that you may occlude the MCA with your clips. Now taking the, the temporary clip out and checking the situation. I think there is a lot of the beer belly aneurysm is left. So we have to put one more clip here. Second. One more clip is put there, tandem clip, in tandem way. The clips look terribly big, but the magnification is very big also. I always push the magnification, highest one, it is around 14, 15 the Pentron microscope and this is checking with Doppler the flow. And uh, once more checking. then putting regular cotton to induce scarring. You cannot take all the weak A's away because then you would occlude the MCA and then again 
close into Sylvia Fisher, and this is post operative pictures. The patient recovered well. And the, you see here the ventricular catheter through lamina terminalis. I put it in severe bleeding so you can release CSF and uh, measure the intracranial pressure. This is unruptured right middle cerebral artery aneurysm. And uh, patient name is Kukliel, Maria Kukliel. This is a growing aneurysm. So Guida Kuglielmi sends the patient, his sister, to me to be operated on the inventor of the coils and the vascular, one of the great men in endovascular surgery. There are very few people in the world who can change the world. Serbinenko, Kuglielmi were the ones in endovascular surgery in microsurgery. Here are the high magnification opening to Sylvia Fischer with needle and attached to tuberculin syrinx, injecting water to distend the Sylvia Fischer, Kamiyama schizos opening the Sylvia Fischer and uh, through one inch opening the Sylvia Fisher will come to the anorsum. Of course, tailoring your opening of the Sylvia Fisher so that you will come directly to the anorsum. Like I told you, I always I'm always looking at the length of M1. Then you can estimate where you should go inside. If short, then more proximal. If long and more distal. So this is one of the important things when look planning the anal surgery. Now we see the anal. It looks that it has strong wall, but it was growing. So here we see the here is soon coming the tit, the growing part. It has very weak wall here. Now you see, now you see that it, this part would burst if rupture would occur. Now we are looking for the M1 coming from distally, so we will find below the aneurysm, we will find the M1 here, and here the small perforators. I push the temporary clip in place here. And then now you see that the aneurysm is soft or more, by far more soft. And take a J-formed clip, remove the temporary clip. Now you see that the, there's one, one part of the aneurysm is, uh, remains outside of the clip. I push one more clip there and then take the dock here with small clip. And here's one, one corner also. So I put one more clip. Of course, in this special case, you are extremely careful. So, ICG was good. Doppler here, checking the arteries, and the patient made very good recovery. I think Hugo Andrade is here. He was closing the patient wound and speaking Italian, could communicate with the patient very well. Next case is is edited by Johan Choco. 
was responsible for the 1001 videos which you can find in the internet, all of these cases. This is how it looks after coiling when you have recurrences and they are many when you push coils inside the MC aneurysms. I don't think the new tricks in endovascular treatment of MCA aneurysms hold very long time. In big countries, China, Latin America, India, the follow-up is very poor and totally different than in, for example, in Scandinavian countries and maybe in some European countries. But the, here you see that the recurrence, after the recurrence is very difficult to treat the aneurysm. So I, it looks simple. I push two clips, but what both M2s are closed because there is not much of the base of the aneurysm. We, we publish our uh, th those, uh, we publish our series, maybe around 80 patients, which were operated after coiling. And one wise thing was that you have to have enough base after recurrence, space for the clip. Here is a little bit scarce. So I had to open the aneurysm and reconstruct and then take coils out because some of the coils were also inside M2. So you cannot, and in M2 wall, so you couldn't take them out. Now I'm, I'm trying to have optimal clipping, but it's difficult because the base is so scarce. See, now the two seem to fill, and this is DSA postoperative. We, we did also, so these are postoperative controls. So we could manage, but it was close, it was close to fail. Edited by Chiang Chian, Chinese neurosurgeon, my fellow. This is unruptured large MCA neurosurgeon bifurcation. Location. Left sided lateral supraarticular approach, local anesthesia, and then lateral supraarticular approach. One bur hole here, and then two cuts, and then small bone flap is coming out. So, very good hemostasis is important because when you are in the most critical place, then blood may pour in your neck and disturb the field, <coughs> opening the sylvia fissure. Of course, now anatomy is by far more clear than in ruptured cases. Now venous bleeding here. And the small ball like Aneurysm is coming there. We have to dissect the proximal MCA. That's temporary clip now. I enlarge and giant aneurysm. I always take a ring clip learned from Dr. Drake because the ring clip is not slipping out. It's holding. And then you should close the opening in the ring clip with the straight clip. This, I'm changing the position of the clip many times. And then now a strong straight clip is coming and I take the temporary clip out. When you take the temporary clip out, you have to be very careful. Don't take it 
ruptured cases very quickly out because if it dies bleeding, you may not be able to put it back. Here, I have to dissect more the bifurcation, sub dissection. Hannes is trying to escape clipping. So it takes takes several clips are pushed on the strong aneurysm. I'm coagulating it down to reduce the size. And then several strong clips are there and all the time controlling the flow with Doppler and finally with ICG. Still coagulating down. I I think I should add one more clip there. Okay, it's going there. So there's a long, long row of the clips now. In one case, there was a giant aneurysm very distally, so the, the handles of the clip remained under temporal, temporal muscle. And here, post-operative controls. Next case. Jing Jian, again, edited. This now ruptured large MCA aneurysm. So you see a lot of blood. And we also now the hematoma, which I was telling, may, in, may make emergency surgery necessary. Lateral supra of the approach, two cuts, then taking the bone flap out, drilling the bone, and then opening the dura. And you will see now a red, angry, angry, swollen brain, opening again the silvia fissure, and now blood is coming and dissecting with water the silvia fissure open the camion schizos In that kind of big aneurysm, you should have always proximal control and uh, temporary clips because otherwise it's very difficult, difficult to treat the aneurysm. I went over the aneurysm, put a temporary clip here, and now we are. Manipulating the anus, we put the temporary the pilot clip. So the anus sac is here, anus sac is here, uh, but the, it's not uh, optimally clipped. But uh, this is the beginning, beginning of the process of clipping. Checking the flow, M2s. I think the clips are now too short. Doesn't look good. Uh, it's coming now, a longer one. And then
checking again with Doppler. The M2s are open, but here it, I think some part of the unknown remain, but maybe I just, certainly I didn't leave. It looks good, yeah. The next one. Ah, this is my favorite, but I I don't show it because of lack of time. This was a 13 years old the girl, girl Nata, Natalie had a temporal epilepsy and uh, had this calcified, mainly calcified giant aneurysm. I was looking at the base, that was, was free base. So I operated on her and uh, she made a very good recovery. So now they studied chemistry and is working in a hospital in Lapland now. So I saw this picture because one of my Thai Visitors, Chrysler Sandra, very skillful neurosurgeon, said that a young neurosurgeon has to prove everything. So, how the results are, and he showed always patients photo before and after operation. Then, is <coughs> This is by Johan Choco. Ah, this is a thrombose giant aneurysm. The idea was to operate all the aneurysms in one session to go from the giant one and then to clip the ACAM aneurysm. You see here in MRI, the giant aneurysm. And you see that it is, this, there's a lot of thrombus inside. The aneurysm, the partially thrombosed aneurysms are very dangerous because the thrombus may dislocate during manipulation, clipping of the aneurysm and go to M2s and also occlude them. So now dissecting the giant aneurysm and mandatory temporary clips are pushed here. I put here approximately two temporary clips to be totally sure that uh, circulation is uh, stopped because you are using many times these clips so they may get weak. And now this is a moment you are, there's no coming back. I go with the knife inside and here I use Kusa. I'm not using many times Kusa, but Kusa is very good to take the thrombus out. And here is a special trick vascular clamp, the pequet clamp is crushing the aneurysm and holding it closed after opening and taking the temporary clips out and checking now. And the vascular, you see now it's bleeding. Yeah. And I take ring clip and because we have crushed the giant aneurysm, so there is a root for the clips below. It doesn't look good yet. We have to put the temporary clips again. And then with the help of temporary clips, we can take the uh, thrombus more out. And uh, plan, compress the walls together and take strong clips and adapt the open aneurysmus walls with the row of clips and uh, all the time checking the M2, the flow there <coughs> and the ICG has been tremendous help of course, in intraoperative assessment. Now changing the tips. Once more checking. I think uh, the M2s were not open, so we have 
I cannot go back in this because they are in PowerPoint, but uh, I think uh, M2s were not filling in the ICG. So we have to reconstruct again. And now I'm told to, these are the final clips. Important here is to leave some base because if you try to take from outside exactly the base of the anodes, and then you occlude the bifurcation totally, and both M tools are occluded. So in large giant anodes, wise to leave some base, and it is. <laughs> it is so strong, the base, usually there, there's no possibility for it to rupture. Many times changing the clips and now carefully taking the temporary clips out and now we have to make check again if the arteries are open and make ICG and now it is in contrast to the first one, the M2s are filling and uh, then papa brain of the manipulated arteries and then closing carefully and then these are the postoperative controls and the patient recovered well. Because it was so difficult to do the giant aneurysm, I didn't go to the other aneurysm this time. So it is wise not to go forward in multiple aneurysms if you have difficulties. With the first ones, first one, many times difficult to interrupt, but you should not go further. And then finally, this is a distal anorism. What is distal anorism? Distal MC anorism are extremely difficult to find. One K ruptured case, I had to open three times to find the anorism in the 80s to go to Angio, come back, and then again, come back. So it is so difficult. Nowadays, with Navigator, you can find the others well. Here, this case, I thought, okay, I will certainly find. You will see what happens. Opening distal sylvian fissure, filling it with water, to distant, I'm lose, lo, lost this vein here. So I call, had to coagulate the vein. This one, I, maybe I didn't lose, but uh, lose it, but uh, the bleeding I had to coagulate is feeling well here and here. So now searching, 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 getting desperate. And of course, you have to be very, very careful when searching. So, is the sound increasing or increasing? Sound, I think we're having a problem with the sound there, Yuha. Is anyone else having a problem with the sound? Can you hear me oh, now, John? It's okay. Is, is it, it, okay? It, yeah, it's, it's okay? Yes, it's okay. We are I'm sorry, enjoying. Yuha. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Now you see what happens here. So I was looking long time, long time, at least many minutes in one place. And then I had to open the Sylvia Fisher other place. And then I find the others. So this is how the distal MCA anors are extremely difficult to find in the archipelag of the distal Sylvian Fisher. So when you find the distal MCA anors, then you, it is easy to clip, but the finding may make you desperate. So, proximal bifurcation aneurysms you will always find, but in these distal ones you have to check very carefully. And if you can use navigation, so it is wise to use it. So, yeah, aneurysm. This is the pilot clip. Yeah. 
pilot grip is called the first grip because you are changing the position. Now I'm drawing the aneurysm inside the grip with a small forceps. I'm grasping the aneurysm and then uh, drawing so that uh, all the base is taken. And, and now changing the clip, take, taking curved clip down, and this is the final clip, taking all the base, base and the uh, <coughs> arteries remain. Now again, the small forceps, I draw the aneurysm inside, and then let the clip close so the, all the base is taken here. And add it. Seems that I uh, added some clips. One more clip there. This is supposed to produce picture. And you see the distal side of the aneurysm. So very difficult to find. So this is the conclusion of the distal MCA aneurysms. So concluding, middle cerebral artery aneurysms are superficial and should be clipped. This is my thinking and experience and remains so. Unfortunately, many stents are pushed in innocent middle cerebral artery, long segments and many different coils are pushed inside, but they these aneurysms recur in high frequency. So I thank you very much. Okay, you are, thank you very much. You cover a lot of territory. Here, let me get you off that screen share. Okay, I, I can bump you off there. Okay, very good. Okay, we're gonna open the floor uh, to questions for you, huh? Is, is Vlad, oh, Vlad here? Yeah. Hey, Vlad, welcome. Hello, Vlad. Hello, hello John. Hello, hello you uh, are. Hello. That was great. Uh, Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I would add one, one thing that, uh, uh, especially in the large and giant ones, uh, you need the uh, bypass techniques in uh, middle cerebro. That's the best. I will, I will speak about in future, future of that. I was, I was thinking. Oh, you saved that. I, I was selecting from many hundreds uh, there were 600 videos of MCA aneurysm, so I was selecting these cases and then I was thinking that there are special cases, giant aneurysms, where you are doing biopsies. Of course, if, if you are extremely skillful in biopsies, your, your threshold is low to do a biopsy. But uh, like me, I learned very late to do biopsies, so my threshold to do bypass surgery is is higher, so I, I never that. learned. I never learned very well bypass surgery, so I made direct surgery. Like Professor Sano is not doing any bypasses, but uh, I did bypasses more than one hundred. But uh, but I never became so good. So I was trusting more on. Uh, uh, I understand. In clipping, yeah. Okay. And the ne next uh, remark would be that in those large ones, the bottom of the aneurysm, the neck, actually is very, very strong. It's thick wall. And uh, I don't hesitate to leave a bit of the uh, base of the aneurysm behind. It never grows. Uh, and you spare all the perforators, uh, M2s and... Uh, I feel safe leaving a piece of aneurysm behind in, in really large ones with thick wall. This is what I said. This is what I said. Oh, you did. I it missed is, that. It is, it is, uh, you have to leave some base. Otherwise, you occlude the bifurcation. So exactly. you have to leave. So it is, uh, if you are too perfect from outside, then you kill the patient because the bifurcation is occluded. So you have to be very careful. And ICG has been, and of course, the microdoppler are very, very, very good in uh, yep. checking that. Uh, earlier we did uh, intraoperative, in, uh, intraoperative DSA with CR, some selected cases. But, uh, very good. This is to leave the basis extremely important. Thank you. Thank you. OK. More comments, questions? Yeah. 
John, this is Dr. Welcome. Ali. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, thank yeah, you very yeah. much. Yeah, can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, uh, this is Dr. Altra Fali. I, I work at uh, Aga Khan University Hospital, Karachi. I'm a neurosurgeon. And uh, Juha, it's, it's an, an, an splendid kind of uh, presentation you have been giving to us in last couple of weeks. And we are thankful to Mr. Uh, John Bennett. He's also doing extraordinary job by keeping us engaged in the, these days. Thank so my, my question is, how often do you get the proximal control in MCA aneurysm? Question A. Question B, as you mentioned just in your previous command that you leave some sort of uh, residual if it's at the bifurcation, then do you rape that with the with the some cotronoid or like uh, some piece so that to prevent the recurrence? In large aneurysms, the base is extremely strong. So it is no residual actually, it is, uh, it is uh, if you are leaving some base in control angiogram, it looks perfect. From outside, it may look that you have left some base, but in control angiogram, there is nothing to be seen because the thick walls are pushed together. So the, all the aneurysm is occluded. So and it is a big wise doom uh, to leave some base in large and giant aneurysms. How long to leave the temporary clip in place? So I'm fast searching. I'm not asking to count the time. I'm just trying to do the best possible job. But usually this, if you have the temporary clip less than five minutes, then there are no difficulties or complications. And uh, even so, I think it is better to do the job well than to try to hurry very much. I, I'm always astounded with the, with the, uh, when you have a bacillar thrombosis or MCA thrombosis, the patients have several hours after occluded and then open and they recover well. So I think uh, these time limits, if you are, have a temporary clip in five minutes or 10 minutes, you should not get disturbed. Just do your job well. And uh, I try to cool down, remembering that many people run one mile in less than four minutes. So we have a lot of time to do the job. Right. My second question was, uh, in fact, this is third question. Do you go, do you open the Sylvan fissure proximally and then proceed distally? Are you open it from distally to proximal? In I, MCA I, I, I began already as very young neurosurgeon, actually immediately when I got the specialty. So I began to open distally the Sylvia Fisher because I didn't understand why they go down and then I come back. So I began to open distally and this is how I had done, done all my life or many years in two, you know, maybe in more than 2000 MC annuals I have opened focused and distally. But of course, if you have very proximal annuals, you go down to have your temporary cliffs. But, the main part of the M M1s are more than 10 millimeters, millimeter, so you, it, you can go distally. So I, I thought you can see it. I open very one inch the Sylvian fissure. Of course, in the beginning you are opening more, but then you get used and now the imaging is so good that you can focus your uh, approach to the Aneurysm. I go directly around the aneurysm, not usually very proximally far away. But this might be wrong, but this is my experience. It might be wrong advice for a very young, young neurosurgeon, but I think I have done 
it is already when I was very inexperienced. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. For the question, more comments or questions? Now's your chance. Hello, Dr. Cabullo. Are you there or you step away? Okay, perhaps he stepped away. Uh, let's see. Okay. Everyone's quiet. Well, we can. We, <laughs> uh, Louis no, had no. one interesting case. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Oh, did you want to present now, Louis? Okay, let me, let me, you have to unmute there. And I have to uh, formally end this. Yeah, unmute there, Louis. Yeah, un unmute there. Unmute there, Louis. Okay. I, okay. I want to check the case. I think it's this. Uh, is this. Uh, okay. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, is this case? It's a particular case. I think, uh, like a, a Yuha, this case. It's a certain genus Bacillus tipanibis treated by endoluminal reconstruction. What is endoluminal reconstruction? It's a stem, but no flow diverted. It's overlapping stem. I, I place seven Leo stem. Why? Because the wall of the bacillar aneurysm is a arteriosclerotic and is very complex. And the flow diverter don't work well because the diameter of the aneurysm in origin of the visa part is different. You have too much. Okay, I present this case and the midterm mid -term follow up and control one year. It's a, a male of 53 year old. I have a deterioration, cognitive deterioration progressive with uh, troops of language, speak, and also have a parino syndrome and an hypoesthesia. It's all right. Okay. And the the test of neurocognitive test have a dementia, thalamic dementia. And the MR magnetic resonance, you are a uh, Partial thrombus anibrins with hyper signal peripheral peripheral of the anibrins is gliosis or um, desmilinization. The and the, the angel. You are the serpentinous anebrins in the proximal part. And this are part, you are two branches. You are the superior cerebral artery and the posterior cerebral artery. This is the lateral view. And the test occlusion with balloon don't have the posterior communicant anastomosis. I decide to treat it and in the first step, I place the microcatheter in the distal part of anevis to this point. And then develop the Leo stem, the distal to proxima, overlapping stem. Why don't use the flow diverted? Because the diameter on this part is impossible. 
uh, this is different and you are probably thrombosis. Uh, why not to clip? I, I don't have a good neurosurgeon team to have this procedure. Okay, this is the road mapping, the catheter. This is the first Leo stand. Second, third, four, and five Leo stand. This is the, the Leo stand. You are more quantity, uh, more number of Leo here. And when I talk with the, uh, with the engineer, three Leo stands, I, I have the same effect of flow diverter because the cell is closed. This is the initial and a breeze. This is the Leo stand. After first procedure, and you are here at the control. Presenting one month later, reduce the wall here. You are only this part. The branch, distal branch is still open. Two months later, more progressive thrombosis of the aneurysm. And six months later, fantastic result and the clinical symptom stay in the, mesh, the same situation is not improve the patient, but it's not bad. Okay. This is the final scanner in 2010. One year later, have uh, regrowth the animals. This is the control six months. But one year later, regrowth, and you are this. You are one in the link here. Another here, they probably here. In the later phase, you are the endolink, and you are the endolink from this and this. This is the reason we regrow the wall, the thrombus in the anemone. And how the side in this moment bypass, more flow, diversion of flow, stand or stand, more overlapping. Silk or paper line or flow diverter, proximal occlusion to invert the flow, holidays, why not? I decide to treat the animals with more Leo stem. I place two more Leo stem. Total are uh, seven Leo stands. But in the control angio, I have a small reduction of flow on the posterior cerebral artery. And few minutes later, the posterior cerebral artery is closed. I decide to balloon, to open this branch, and during manipulation, the wall of the artery is ruptured, bleeding. 
Uh, in this moment, I, I decide it's impossible to put um, to navigate with another stand or the flow diverter. Finally, I decide to close the artery with coiling. Um, this is the final result. Stop bleeding, but don't have the collateral circulation in occipital lobe. After result, final result, you are ischemia. And finally, the patient dead uh, one week later. Uh, this case is, uh, is, is to, to, to check what sometimes is the difficult case and difficult decision to treat the patient. Look, now also don't have the ischemia and the posterior artery. Also, you are the ischemia and the edema in talam by ta the thalamus and mesencephal. Okay, do you have any comment? Does anybody have comments for Lewis? What was the site of this aneurysm? I was not careful in the beginning. Is the basilar bifurcation aneurysm? No. Why not? No, no. It, it is a partially thrombosed basilar bifurcation aneurysm with the channel inside it. No, no, no. You, uh, take a look at the angels. It's thrombus, partial thrombus, but the, in the distal part of the basilar artery. No bifurcation. Why? Because uh, uh, this minute, I think is this. Uh, but the, you see here, here is a. Take it back. No, look, look. You have, you are take, here. Take it. No, no. But the, is, take AP, AP, AP. Okay, this yeah. is AP. This is AP. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. What is this one? This is PCA. PCA is this. And this, this is, is PCA? Yes, and this is superior cerebellar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is PCA uh, also. Yes. So I was As thinking you... that it is a channel inside the giant aneurysm here. Yes, oh, exactly. Mm. It's a channel. Look, 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 you are more magnification. It's a channel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Okay, it is, uh, of course, whatever you are doing, so it is a very challenging case. And uh, desperate cases need desperate treatment. This is how it goes here. But I think uh, maybe the, the, there are no PCAMs in this case, so. Don't so have what, what we have introduced is the slow closing clip somewhere here. But I, I don't know. Because if, for me, this is a giant anorus with the basilar bifurcation, recanalized. But uh, if I. Can you show MRI once more? Mm -hmm. I, I MRI. Don't use the, the, do you want the MRI? The, the in MRI. MRI. Yeah. 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 You are the channel here. Yeah. That's not it's a complex case. Yeah, of course, this is difficult in all the hands of the world. I have, is, I have. Is, is, Benham, is Reza Benham Yahram in audience? Yes. Benham is here? No, I don't know. I have, your I have some case of basilar and it is complex. It's treated by inversion of the flow. If you want another session, I present 
one yeah, or okay. two days. Uh, maybe because you could. It's important to discuss. In one one session, you could tell what is the difference with all the different stands because we are speaking like about food of them. Leo stand, fluid diverter, pipeline. So it is very difficult to understand what are the differences, and so also to the laymen, what are those? Because uh, what you see in the, in the discussion groups, so the people are all the time speaking about different stands and they love something or mm -hmm. propose something. So maybe we should know. Pipeline is here in China is is uh, popular but extremely expensive. So it is uh, more than. 2050 RMB, this is like uh, more than $30,000 a piece of pipeline. So, what regular people can afford it here? Yeah. Yes, it's the same price, the price in. in, in, in so, you push Europe. seven Leo stands. What is the price of them? Uh, 7,000 euros. Okay, yeah, but this is much, much <laughs> money. Also, also. But, but the I patients are not, not paying, yeah. yeah. This is different system, so in this... Yes, uh, yes, it, it's open. It's open cell. I, I prefer don't use the flow diverter stain in basilar territory or arteriosclerotic anemones. <coughs> I prefer yeah. don't use because the radial force is not don't have it's not stiff, and with the flow, the stem going a growth and the link more. Yes, it's 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 a, it's a point to discuss this complex. Animals. Okay, maybe we can speak. One time about with the stents and uh, all the difficult uses of stents. And what are you on? Yeah, this uh, is it John here. Is there some questions? Or yeah, anybody have any uh, more comments or questions in the audience? Very quiet. Oh, it's okay. okay. Okay, you uh, go ahead. Is someone uh, have have a comment? People being shy today, you are. <laughs> I just, uh, the slow closing clip is now, they are, I think they are making some progress in Shanghai, one company, so, so it will come on the market in some, some day. I have one comment to, to Juha, one question. Juha, yeah. um, in how, is your feeling or your experience with the medium size middle cerebral artery when you check with the angio 3D more of the time you are the involucre the, 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 the vessel in the wall of the anemones. But it, in my opinion, this point, when I discuss with the neuro interventional, this, I, I need to use the stand. I discuss sometimes and it probably is not the vessel is involucrated in the world. Probably it's close, but when you are the surgery, you're dissecting and you are the neck. It's large, it's not, but you don't have many times the branch born in the, in the world of the animals. What is your experience? How experience have you? I did in, in, in proximal M1 aneurysms, the anterior temporal branch is coming from the base of the aneurysm. So if you want to do some yes. endoscopy, so you yes. have to push a stent there. And yes. this might be expensive and Unnecessary because the operation is so simple and the clip is so cheap. 
And what is the China practice well, here? So the rich people are taking stent and coils and the poor people are coming to surgery. Based on the background that the culture here is very much afraid of opening the head. And this mm -hmm. is uh, increased by the doctors and nurses. So it is the, somehow the society is, is uh, is uh, afraid of the opening the head. But I think uh, nowadays when you are, have bullet brains, you are flying around the world when it is again possible. So it is simple thing to open the head safely. So it should not be uh, so bad. But one of the things also in China is that they, they are shaving the head. So the females lose, lose their beautiful hair always. So this is also one, one uh, indication in favor of endovascular surgery, of course. But this is very difficult to change. Traditionally, it is very difficult to change. China is huge and very slow in changing some things very fast. So in, in one year, they do changes more than in five years elsewhere. But then there are long tradition. They don't change like this. This uh, shaving of the hair. This I think I I shaved the hair last time 1982, so it is nearly 40 years ago. But now it is here difficult to introduce okay. because they are afraid of infections okay. and so on. So we can speak more about the next time. Maybe John has next webinar beginning. You have a lot of the webinars now. Okay, you. I'm sorry, I lost my sound. I'm just going by what you're saying. Okay, so, okay. Victor, Victor, could you take so over, please? Webinars. Victor, okay, take over, you. please. Uh, uh, I... Next Friday, same time. Yeah. yeah. Next Friday, same time. Excuse I lost me. my audio. You take over, Victor. Okay. Okay. No, I, I think uh, these cases are, are very interesting. Of course, the last uh, case uh, by Dr. Luis Lopez, hi, Dr. Lopez, I think is an unusual kind of uh, aneurysm. And the resolution, the surgical resolution of that is not easy. Uh, as you say, as you said uh, at the beginning, uh, you need uh, uh, the team equipment, uh, some... Uh, uh, other kind of uh, things to to give resolution to this very complex aneurysm. So I think uh, it's not uh, it's not easy mm. by any kind. Mm. Yes, that kind of aneurysm, wherever it is treated in the world, would be extremely difficult. Maybe not but, successful. So it is, it is good to speak about the difficulties also, not only about the successful cases. This is very important. Of course. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much, everybody. See you next week. Thank week. you very much. Thank you. Everybody. Okay, Sorry bye -bye. about my sound. Okay. Have Ciao. a good day or night. Okay. Have, have a hey, good Hey, weekend. Vlad, wait a minute. <laughs> I want to test to see if you read any of those books. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. It's, wait a minute. It's, I, it's, let me, it's, let me it's, pick out a book. No, okay, let me book. pick out one. Those, those have okay, no hold books, on. No. Hold on. Okay. In, in the okay, let's see. Next to the uh, that yellow that red statue. You see the red statue there? The red statue. Uh, yeah. Is it with the red coat, the red coat on the third shelf, it looks like. The third Doctor shelf. From the bottom is neurosurgery. We're, we're, we're doing oh, this. We do, we'll see right. if Vlad re read any of these books. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't you see, you the see. Book. You just got no, me. You, you, okay. Okay. There you go. You see, you see that red statue, uh, Vlad? There's a red statue with a red sweater. Oh, you mean the Bolivian? Yeah, Over yeah. There. Pick out a book in front of that. In from front, Bolivia, when we were in, in Cochabamba, having a course on white matter. 
It was well, yeah, great. you got to pick a, pick out a book, Rod. We're yeah. going to test you to see if you read it. Great. No, you pick out the book. Go go pick it out. The book or the statue? Oh, go, go ahead. Get the book. Bring it there. Bring it here. We're testing Vlad to see if he really read these books. Here the first go. time he didn't read it. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, of course you read that. Oh, oh you picked out one you caught. You picked out one. I tell you the date. That wasn't a true test. Is this that old 1973? <laughs> it's it's uh, probably the time when we oh, started the surgery, you are, isn't it? I'm being, I'm being. I, I never read this book. Nor me, nor me. Yeah. It's just uh, to fill the library, nothing else. Don't yeah, be afraid, yeah. I'm reading these books. Uh, <laughs> that is the only neurosurgical book at home. I got I, I got a microphone fix. Yeah, I'm pointing at a disadvantage with flat. I don't have my microphone. <laughs> okay, okay, you do you have a topic for next week yet or no? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I was thinking about pericles artery aneurysms. I go side by side. Okay. Okay. Or so thank you very much, yeah. everybody. And we'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Victor. Hello, Vlad. Nice.